Let's take a look at mean, median, mode, and range, and how to find the missing number. Kevin has the following data, W, 3, 7, 6, and 3. If the range is 4, which number should W be? Okay, well let's look at this vocabulary word range. When they're asking you for the range of a data set, the range is always the largest number in your set of data minus the smallest number in your data set. Okay, so let's take a look at these two answer choices and see which one is going to give us a range of 4. Well, if I put 13 in place of W, okay, so if I put 13 in here, my numbers would be 13, 3, 7, 6, and 3. Well, to find the range, we'd have to say the largest minus the smallest. Well, that would make 13 the biggest number, and that would make 3 the smallest. But if I said 13 minus 3, that's going to give me 10, not 4. So it can't be 13. Okay, so it must be 3, but let's double check. If I put 3 in place of W, my numbers would be 3, 3, 7, 6, and 3. That would mean my largest number is 7, and I would have to subtract my smallest number of 3. And if I say 7 minus 3, that does give me 4, which is exactly the range we were looking for. So it must be 3. Darren has the following data, G, 7, 4, 7, and 4. If the range is 4, which number should G be? Okay, well again, remember we know that the range is the largest minus the smallest number. Okay, so I want to look at those two and see which one do I think is going to give me a range of 4. Well, 8 and 7 definitely aren't going to be the smallest numbers. They would be the biggest. Either I already have a 7, I'm adding one more 7. Well, that's not quite going to work, right? 7 minus 4 would give me 3. But 8 looks pretty good because if I put 8 in place of G, I would have 8, 7, 4, 7, and 4. Well, 8 would be my biggest number, minus 4 would be my smallest, and 8 minus 4 works out perfectly to give me a range of 4. So G must be 8. Anna has the following data, D, 8, 8, 10, and 9. If the range is 2, which number should D be? Okay, well... To have a range of 2, that means my biggest number minus my smallest number would have to be 2. And if I look at my data set without D, my biggest number is 10 minus 8 would give me that 2 already. So if I put another 8 in here, that would work, right? 8, 8, 10, and 9, I would still say 8 or 10 minus 8, which gives me a range of 2. So that works out perfectly. If I were to put 5 in there, then I would have to say 10 minus 5, and that's not going to work out. So D must be 8. Caitlin has the following data, E, 4, 3, 3, and 9. If the mean is 4.2, which number should E be? Okay, well this time we're working with a different vocabulary word. The mean is another word for the average. It's what you get when you add up all of your numbers and you divide by how many numbers there are in your data set. So let's try one of these and see what it gives us for our mean or average. Let's try two. If I put two in place of E, I would say 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 9, right? I'm just adding up all of these numbers, and I'm using that 2 in place of E. Okay, so I would add them all up and then divide by how many numbers there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers, so I would divide that by 5. 
Okay, we'll add them up first. So let's see, two plus four, that gives me six, plus another three gives me nine, plus another three gives me 12, plus another nine gives me 21. So two plus four plus three plus three plus nine all adds up to 21. And then I still need to divide that by five. Okay, well let's take our calculator 21 divided by five. Okay, and that gives me an answer of 4.2. Okay, that's exactly the mean or average that I was looking for. So E must be equal to two. Sydney has the following data, J, 9, 14, 13, and 14. If the range is 6, which number should J be? Okay, well since they're asking us about the range, remember that's your largest minus your smallest number. So I want to see which one of these is going to give me an answer of 6 when I subtract the largest minus the smallest. Well if I try 15 and I put 15 in place of J, that would mean 15 is my biggest number, and then I would subtract my smallest number, which would be nine. Well, 15 minus nine, that works out perfectly to give me six. So J must be 15. Jack has the following data, R, 10, 14, 16, and 12. If the range is 6, which number should R be? Okay, well range is the biggest minus the smallest, so we want to see which one is going to give us a range of 6. Okay, well if I try the R as 9, let's put 9 where R is, that would mean that the biggest number would be 16 minus the smallest number in my data set would be 9. But 16 minus 9 would give us 7, not 6, so that doesn't work. Okay, so it can't be 9. It must be 12. Let's give that a try. If we put 12 in place of R, then our biggest number would be 16, and our smallest number would be 10. If I say 16 minus 10, that does give me a range of 6, so that works out perfectly. So R must be equal to 12. Landon has the following data, W, 7, 8, 3, and 6. If the mean is 5.4, which number should W be? Well, again, remember the mean is the average or the number that you get when you add up all of your numbers and divide by how many numbers there are. Okay, so let's try one of these and see if it gives us a mean of 5.4. Let's try seven. If I put seven in place of my W, then when I add up all of my numbers, I would say seven plus seven plus eight plus three plus six, and then I would have to divide that by how many numbers there are. There's one, two, three, four, five numbers, so we would divide that by five. Okay, well let's start by adding them all together. Seven plus seven plus eight plus three plus six gives me 31. And then I would still have to divide that by five. Okay, 31 divided by five gives me 6.2. So that's a little bit too big. It has to be a number smaller than seven. So that means it must be three. Now, if you wanted to double check it, you could plug in three and make sure it works. So if I try putting three in place of W, then I would say three plus seven plus eight plus three plus six. Since there's one, two, three, four, five numbers, I would divide it by five. Okay, and let's make sure that works out. Three plus seven plus eight plus three plus six gives me a total of 27. And then when I divide that by five, I get 5.4. Okay, that's exactly the mean that I was looking for. So W must be three.
Isabel has the following data. U, eight, five, five, five. If the mean is six, which number should U be? Okay, well, let's take a look at this and see which one we think. Now, I'm gonna take a guess. I think seven might look like it works a little better. So let's try seven first. If I put seven in place of U, well, the mean is the average, so I would add up all of my numbers and divide by how many numbers there are and see if it gives me a mean or average of six. Okay, so that would be seven plus eight plus five plus five plus five. Okay, when you add these together, seven plus eight plus five plus five plus five gives me 30. And then I would have to divide that by there's one, two, three, four, five numbers. Okay, so that would give me 30 divided by five. Well, that's gonna work out. 30 divided by five gives me six. So U must be seven. Z, six, seven, one, and five. If the median is six, which number should Z be? Okay, well keep in mind, the median is the middle number when your numbers are listed from least to greatest. Okay, so let's try one of these. Let's try one first. If I put one in place of Z, and then I list my numbers from least to greatest, then I would have, okay, two ones, those would be my smallest numbers, and then five, and then six, and then seven. Okay, well this would give me a middle number or a median of five, right? There's two smaller and two bigger, so that's close, but not quite. Now let's try putting in seven. Okay, well, if I put seven in for Z, well, again, we have to list those numbers from least to greatest before we can find the median or middle number. So this time I would say one is my smallest number and then five and then six and then seven. This time I have another seven and we wanna see the middle number. Well, the middle number this time would be six, right? There's two smaller and two bigger. So this would give me a median of six. So Z must be seven. Ashley has the following data, H, eight, 10, nine, and one. If the median is eight, which number should H be? Okay, so again, that median is the middle number when your numbers are listed out from least to greatest. And please don't forget to put them in order before you find the middle number. Okay, so let's be a little strategic about this. If we want eight to be the median, I can see that there's two numbers bigger than eight, right, 10 and nine, so I must want two numbers smaller than eight to put that in the middle. So instead of nine, I'm gonna try three because that is smaller than eight. I think that's gonna work. So let's try it to see. If I take three and put that in place of my H, when I list my numbers out from least to greatest, my smallest is one, and then three, and then eight, and then nine, and then 10. Okay, and you can see that this is gonna work. And another way you can keep track of finding your middle number is you can try crossing them off. You can say cross off the smallest and the biggest, cross off the next smallest and the next biggest, and that'll work your way to the middle. And that's especially helpful if you had more numbers in your list. Okay, so that works out and gives us a median of eight, so H must be three.